regional disparities introduction dear students all of us know that india is a developing country and that it has the capacity to be one of the developed countries in the world we have also heard about some places being poor and backward while some cities are flourishing and getting all the foreign aids every year when the government announces the financial budget in the parliament one can see the amount of tension and protests happening when some region does not get the allocated funds they need to develop we have also witnessed protests by some regions in various states asking for a different state for them and new states of jharkhand chatisgarh came into being we also know that some states in the north are more backward than the south and that the south is developing faster than some states in the north hence we will try to see the reasons for these differences in regions definition of region a region is an area especially part of a country or the world having definable characteristics but not have always fixed boundaries and has a unique culture economy topography climate politics and environment a region is a territory the inhabitants of which have an emotional attachment to it because of commonality of religion language usage and customs socio economic and political stages of development common historical traditions a common way of living etc this territory can coincide with the boundaries of a state parts of a state or even with more than one state definition of disparity disparity means a lack of equality or similarity differences inequality it can also mean the condition or fact of being unequal different from others it can also be explained as a disparity between the standards of living applying within a nation that is the differences between regions with respect to specified variables such as income employment etc by regional disparities or imbalances one means wide differences in per capita income literacy rates availability of wealth education services levels of industrialization etc between different regions regional disparities in india the regional disparity in india is now a matter of serious concern it is due to the differences one can find in all spheres of development since india is a large country with many states and regions this disparity among them was sure to come as not all regions are equal with each other some are rural urban literacy rate infrastructure resources etc are all the parameters with which one can compare with each other these imbalances in a region are called regional imbalances and this contributes to a region's backwardness it is well known that in a large economy different regions with different resources bases and endowment will have a dissimilar growth rate and path over time one of the reasons why centralized planning was advocated earlier in india was to restrain the regional disparity in spite of planning and economic measures the regional disparity remain a serious problem in india one can see disparities among the regions due to the lack of infrastructure education etc fields of disparities there are many fields in which one can find disparities it can be in the infrastructure education health income economic development etc we will learn about some of them infrastructural disparities regional disparities in economic development can be explained in terms of uh, 
varying levels of infrastructural services available to people in different regions. Improvement in infrastructural services is essential for enhancing the productive process and for raising productivity. Both growth of a city can be due to both infrastructure and economy. They are interdependent. Infrastructure promotes growth and economic growth brings about change in infrastructure. There are several studies examining the relationship between different physical infrastructure services and per capita income output. These studies suggest that infrastructure thus contribute towards the growth of output, income and employment of the economy and ultimately the quality of life. Regions with a good infrastructure will automatically woo the foreign capitals to invest in that place, hereby improving the standard of the people in that region by increasing employment. When that happens, then that region starts to develop leaving behind the other regions. Hence, one can say that a good infrastructure is needed for the progress of the region. Some may also say that the infrastructure should be utilized properly, then only it will be beneficial. And this theory is also right. If a region has the best infrastructure to develop, but the people and the government don't know how to utilize them, then it will lead to stagnation and backwardness. In India, we see that the states that have a good infrastructure is developing faster than the others. As such, poverty in those places are very less compared to the states of Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Urissa, etc. where the infrastructure is so low and people are also poor. Educational disparities. Traditionally, India was a caste-ridden society, wherein the superior caste people only got education, people only got educated while the lower caste people were denied education. But with the passage of time, people from all strata could get education because the stringent caste system was falling down. Indian government also started making policies and implementing education for all. This process is still slow because of the attitude of people and overpopulation. And some states who have more rural population and minorities are still backward in terms of education. Most of the South Indian states like Kerala, Tamil Nadu, etc. have more educated people and their literacy level is higher than other North Indian states due to the good infrastructure and help from private organization. Many engineering and medical colleges started to open in these states which facilitated higher education to people. By doing so, many people have started migrating to these regions for education. Disparities in the field of healthcare. In terms of healthcare resources, also one can see that the regions that are superior and have good infrastructure and economy have the best healthcare facility and specialty hospitals. As such, the mortality rate is less and proper healthcare is possible. The poor states do not have such specialty hospitals. As such, the people do not get proper treatment and these people have more mortality rates. They have to depend on these superior regions for healthcare facility. Most of the people in backward regions live in rural areas. Hence, the health conditions of these people are very poor and bad. They do not have even proper hospitals to take care of the ill and the aged. Urban Rural Disparity India is socially a rural type. For centuries, people were living in a rural type of society. It was only during industrialization that people started moving from rural setup to places where the industries were set up for livelihood. This migration of people led to the urban setup. or as we know as cities but now also we do find villages in india but the development is so rapid that it is affecting the rural villages but this effect on the villages is very slow and hence 
one can see that the regions that have developed cities are far ahead of the places that are not that developed. Hence, there is a disparity between the rural and the urban. The main disparity one can find is that the level of people living in rural areas is still poor and majority of people live under the poverty line. They have less income and they have lack in basic necessities. The rural people are also the labor force in urban society. Hence, one can see that the population of rural people in the urban areas are increasing, leading to a rural type of setup in some areas in the cities. The education level or literacy level is low and also the health care is very low. Hence, their life expectancy is also very low compared to those in the cities. Disparity between the north and south. The disparity between the north and south of India is also seen. This disparity between them has been there for centuries. It was always considered that the northern states are more important and powerful than the south Indian states. This feeling increased due to the British rule as they believed in the policy of divide and rule. In the rate of development, also one can see that the South Indian states are more developed and has better infrastructure compared to that to their counterparts in the North. They are also educated and literacy rates are also high. The rate of poverty is also very less compared to the poverty rate in the North where it is very high. Hindi is spoken by only the people from North and hence it should have not been declared as the national language. The people down south look at North Indians as a community that places importance on show, splendor, outlook and other important things are very trivial to them. The people from Bombay and north of it are more exposed to fashion, lavish spending, highly westernized influences in daily life and an undying urge to stand out in the society. The people down south consider themselves to be leap years ahead when it comes to the achievements in education and personal lives. They consider themselves very simple people and for them all this showbiz and lavish spending is something one cannot think of. The North Indians consider the south backward and narrow-minded. They feel that they are superior to the South Indians on the basis of color, language, dressing sense, etc. All these have resulted in a divide which becoming prominent in modern times. Economic disparities. One of the major reasons for the regional disparities that may arise in the course of economic development due to the uneven distribution of natural resources, employment, and concentration of industrial activities in a few developed centers. Consequently, the regional disparities can be thought of as a problem of industrial location. In modern times, India is often seen as an emerging economic superpower. The huge demographic dividend, the high quality engineering and management talent, developed infrastructure in some regions have made India famous globally. India is considered a fast developing country economically. On the contrary, this is also the country with the largest number of the poor, illiterates and unemployed in the world. High infant mortality, morbidity and widespread anemia among women and children. This acute economic and social disparities because of the disparities in the level of development in different regions in India. It is seen that when the growth rate of an economy accelerates, some regions with better resources would grow faster than others, which bring about an acceleration in the income of people who are residing in that region as compared to other regions. Economic development and social development mutually reinforce each other and vice versa. The gains of economic development are benefited by the socially developed groups. The economic gains will help them to further develop their social skills which in turn will enable them to gain more economically. On the other hand, socially backward may gain only marginally from economic development 
which may not be sufficient for them to improve their social skills which will enable them to earn more the problem of regional disparities in economic development in india to a great extent is an inheritance from the colonial past like development of the port towns of bombay madras calcutta and these three cities have in turn worked towards the development of maharashtra gujarat tamil nadu west bengal respectively which are at present the most industrially advanced states in india on the other hand the areas having natural mineral resources such as bihar uttar pradesh madhya pradesh orissa and rajasthan have lagged far behind in the process of economic development because they were the neglected regions and the people were all illiterate and poor as such they did not have a proper infrastructure to use these resources for their development after independence many industries and factories were set up in these areas but it didn't go as per the expectations of the central government it could be because of the location of these plants and the reason that they were backward regions and had no proper methods or infrastructure that could have helped in its development there was no proper planning done before these industries were started as such different states had not achieved the same level of development that was expected by them on the other hand the states like maharashtra gujarat tamil nadu and west bengal were developed in many respects than other states of the country these states were not only industrially developed but they also had most of the industries located in and around them because they had ports and the british people had developed those regions for their trade with other countries due to the legacy that was left in the british rule and our economic developmental policies taken immediately after independence were responsible for this aggravation in the situation the first two plans introduced after our independence was to increase production in those industries that had already been started in fact we were more interested in quick production and results because we believed at that time that by doing so as fast as possible india could develop and so greater emphasis was on completion of the project which had already started and starting such projects which could be completed within a short period so that the stagnation that was there in the country could be broken and india could go in the path of rapid development this stagnation was because during the british rule india had made no progress economically and economy was totally depleted after independence proper planning was not done as to how to utilize our resources properly and how to see that all states and regions develop together the policy to make all societies urban from rural also was a failure during this period the developed states had more population in urban areas while the other states had a very few percentage of people in urban areas the majority of them were still living in rural areas so in states like orissa and bihar this urbanization policy rate was very low although uttar pradesh rajasthan madhya pradesh and kerala were not different they were much better than those of orissa and bihar the inequality between regions was widening up regarding the distribution of employment it can be pointed out that the inequality between regions has increased regions that were developed gave more opportunities for work and as such employment in these regions increased while the employment opportunities were less in less developed regions this increased the poverty level in those regions many labor force are from the backward region who come to developed regions in search of employment another dimension of the same problem is that while more and more employment opportunities are created in the developed regions of the country one can see that there is a rural urban divide in terms of economic and social development but this divide has also been widening in the recent past 
ratio of urban income to rural income which was just about 1.6 in 1951 and continued to remain within reasonable limit during the first 3 decades of development planning to reach 2.1 in 1980 to 1981 worsened during the last two decades by large and medium cities are experiencing unprecedented economic prosperity the rural areas have been experiencing economic stagnation this is because the people in rural areas are still surviving on agriculture and lack of modern machines and techniques in cultivation has led to them to stagnant while the share of the agriculture in the national income declined the share of population dependent on agriculture remain almost the same over the last two decades with the withdrawal of the state from critical support services for agriculture global competition and higher risk of commercial cultivation farmers especially those were small holdings have been experiencing misery they are feeling helpless and as they are untrained for any other job they cannot find employment outside their region this led to poverty among them and most of them live below the poverty line even though the central government is striving its best way to bring out policies and measures for the less developed regions for a balanced development the relief for the poor states is very minimal only recently some of the backward states like chatisgarh jharkhand and orissa started attracting large people and orissa started attracting large private investment proposals mainly in mining and industries based on mineral extraction the only chance for these states to attract private investment is to create conducive environment including adequate physical and social infrastructure better law and order situation and improved administration efficiency after independence when planning was introduced in india the planners imposed emphasis on regional development along with the objective of increasing the growth rate reduction of poverty increasing employment opportunities etc regional imbalances have got importance in each plan through the degree of emphasis is different though the first two five year plans of the government of india made reference to problems of regional development in a balanced way it was in the third five year plan that the separate chapter was develop to balance regional development in different regions indications of production investment unemployment electricity consumption irrigated area value of output by commodity producing sectors level of consumption expenditure road mileage primary and secondary education and occupational distribution of population had been looked into as the time passed government of india has been assigning policies to promote rapid economic growth and industrialization redistribution of income resources through creation of employment opportunities creation of employment opportunities and development of small scale industries most emphasis is being given to the development of small scale industries in villages to improve their economic condition hereby improving the economic condition of India as a whole numerous measures have also been implemented in different 5 year plan to achieve balanced regional development of the country it was only with the ninth plan that the efforts and measures is narrowing down the regional disparities have been specially concerned the 10th plan is considered as a reform plan rather a resource plan all states are eligible for getting funds but the ultimate distribution of the funds will be assessed according to its need the 10th plan has been made to identify the backward areas and plan the ways of having equitable and balanced growth at present the central and all state governments are giving more importance to these backward regions to develop and in turn develop india on the whole they are allocating more funds to these places to improve their infrastructure 
and the condition of the people. They are also monitoring and working with their state governments closely. Conclusion In the present scenario, we can only wait and hope that these disparities come down and in their marches ahead of the other countries economically and socially and become a developed country instead of still remaining a developing country.